Hello, everybody. I got my audio interface connected to the screen recorder working again. So I want to try this. I recorded this already once, but it was only on one channel. So I switched to mono. I want to look at Genesis 6, which is a story about Noah and the flood, which we often tell and teach. And I think we do it in the wrong way. I mean, this is a story we tell children, and this is how we tell it. We say that, you know, the people way back then, they were really bad. They got worse and worse, and finally, you know, God, he had to do something. And so he made it rain, and he let water come out from underground, and he destroyed all of them, except for Noah, because Noah was good. Uh, and, no, I mean... Not exactly like that. We, w we would add that he told Noah to tell everybody to get in the ark, but they didn't. And so he drowns them. But I would say that this is not the right way to look at this. God, in, ch in verse 3, says here, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be 120 years. We remember that when God first created Adam, he formed him out of the dust of the ground. But that wasn't enough to make him come to life. He had to breathe his spirit into him, and then he became a living soul. That spirit comes from God. When we die, that breath goes back to him, and our body decays. Without his spirit making our heart pump, making our cells work, our body work, we, we, we are as dead men. And so when we sin, we are rejecting God. We are, we are saying that we don't want your spirit. We don't want your spirit. And so the people at that time they are sinning more and more. They have no interest in God. They're interested only in building houses and collecting money. And as it says here, their hearts were evil continually. Or every imagination of the thoughts of, their, of his heart was only evil continually. The wickedness of man was great. And so if they don't want anything of any part with God, God has to respect that. And so he has to remove himself and when when his spirit is removed we are as flesh and so and god says that because of this because of their actions they only have 120 years before they must see or reap the results and effects of their own actions which is the destruction of the earth and we can see this similar concept to smoking you can smoke for a few years and you won't get sick and if you stop your body will heal itself, but once you've smoked for 30 years, you will have destroyed your lungs. Does God destroy you? You could say that God destroyed you because he has all power, and so he does not have to allow your lungs to be damaged. But if he were not to allow the results of the cigarettes, that would not be respecting your right to destroy yourself, basically. So this word, I will destroy man, in verse 7, is the same word that, that Moses says to God when he says, blot me out of the book. Don't destroy the Hebrews, but blot me out of the book instead. It means to erase. It doesn't mean that he has to actually destroy. It just means that he will forget about them or he will allow them to destroy themselves. But what I want to talk about, we see Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Praise God. Is this word, corrupt. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And this word is, in Hebrew, is shak shakath. So the earth was corrupt before God. But in verse 13 it says, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them from 
with the earth. We'll destroy them with the earth. This word destroy is also shakath. Corrupt shakath, destroy shakath. It's the same word. So if we change this one to destroy, it reads like this. The earth also was destroyed before God. It was already destroyed before the flood because the result of sin is death. It just had not manifested itself yet. It hadn't happened yet, but it was going to happen. It was inevitable. The earth was filled with violence, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. Oh, no, it was destroyed. For all flesh had destroyed his way upon the earth. They were dead men walking, which is what we are on this earth right now. Dead men walking, waiting for the result of our sinful actions, which we see in articles. I read articles saying that all life in the oceans will be destroyed by 2050. All life, all fish. By 2050, that's not long, that's 30 years. Did God destroy all those fish? No. It was our own actions polluting the oceans. We destroyed them. We don't know how, what they were doing in their time. The situation was different, but the principle is the same. The results of their own actions is what destroyed the earth before God because they were filled with violence. It was filled with violence. And another interesting point I want to mention is that it says here, the end of all flesh has come before me. All flesh. If God doesn't do something, humans will destroy themselves. All of them. All of them will be destroyed. All of them. The course of their actions is destruction of all, regardless of whether some are innocent or not. So Noah was innocent. He found grace. And so God told him to build an ark to prepare yourself for the judgment, the destruction that is to come. And preach it to come in the ark. And Noah was saved. He was saved from the destruction, destructive behavior and violence of his fellow man, which caused the earth to spew him out, to vomit him out in Leviticus 18.25. Yes, so that is one thing I wanted to say. I'm not sure. I know I only have 10 minutes to use this. So, yeah, eight minutes. I'll stop here. My first video I talked about Luke 9, but went into detail on here on uh, the ark. But we're, we know that Jesus says that as in the times of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. And we are in the last days. So please let us understand that it is not God who destroys us. We are destroying ourselves and God is offering us a way to be saved, to not perish, but to receive everlasting life through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Almighty God. And when we tell this story, we should say that God allowed the flood to happen respecting the right of men to destroy himself. Respecting the right of man to reap the effects of his own choices. For him not to allow the flood to happen would be not allowing free will. So, was a natural consequence but just as the person who has sinned his whole life God offers forgiveness or even if you've ate bad food and unhealthy your whole life it is possible to turn your life around through the mercy of God he has set it up in a in a way that we can repent and we can be reborn and we can become righteous or healthy uh, which is a way of understanding spiritual things through